Hey, Job Tread Pros. I got a zap here I've been working on that connects uh, my Google Calendar with Job Tread. And the really purpose and intent of this is so that I can schedule meetings in Job Tread. And from there, it will link and create the event in my Google Calendar. It will add the address, the client's email address, uh, location, meeting details, you know, whether it's virtual or not, et cetera. So I've got a couple of different things. There's uh, what six kind of steps here, but really they're they're grouped in two. So the first two are scheduling, the second two are rescheduling, and the third two are deleting an appointment. So in our process, we take a we take the phone call, take the lead, we go through that discovery of understanding, you know, is this uh, someone that we want to work with, or are we the right fit for them, etc. Once we determine that. And I know other people use Calendly and Acuity, and those are all great tools and they're fine. This could be used maybe in conjunction with that or as a substitute for that. So personally, as a business, we want to, uh, and not to talk bad about Calendly or anything, but I want to know if I ask someone, hey, when are you available to for us to come out to your house? And if they're balking about scheduling that or oh, I got to ask my, my husband or my wife or whatever. It's, you know, for us kind of indication about their potential seriousness. So we choose not to send out just here, just book a link and kind of passively book something. We want to really be more um, intentional about how we book. But that's kind of a side card. So in job try to create a couple different uh, fields. So I got set first appointment and set second appointment. The other two fields that I've created are meeting IDs for both the first and second. I'll show you here why that's important and why I set those up. So in the Zap, it's the triggers on customer updated. And what I'm looking for is, and we'll just go right to the schedule uh, appointment. So I'm looking for the data as the customer record is updated. So anytime a record is updated, it will do the tr run the trigger, but it won't run the zap or actions, I should say, unless these criteria are met. And so you can see I've got the paths set up. So the paths are, are essentially filters. So what I'm saying here is if, the, if there's uh, data that exists in the next field, and this is where the next and previous can be really powerful tools because as things are updated, it can uh, pull that information. So if the data next exists and the data previous does not exist, so what I'm basically saying is if it's blank right now, and if I change this to a date, then schedule something. So got that, and I'm creating a unique ID. Let me get into the edit mode. It's a little bit easier to show kind of the steps. So I'm creating this unique ID because I need to be able to find that meeting later. And that's why you'll see I have the meeting ID down here on the record. So that can be placed here and I can actually, I can reference back to it. So the meeting, this formula I use is kind of an Excel, this uh, random between, and I just chose these, it's a lot of digits. I don't think I'll ever run out. So I got that. So that will create kind of this random number for me. And then this particular meeting is 90 minutes long. So I'll do this uh, formatter to add time. And so I'll input my time. So there's no data because it's the um, test is not coming through to allow it. So this wouldn't pass the filter. But I've already tested all this. And I'm about to go through the testing as well. So I've got the input, whatever that date is, plus the 90 minutes. This is the format I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the year, the month, the date, and then the time. When I go to create the event, the action steps are choosing the calendar. So I personally set up a kind of a, a appointments calendar for the, the company. And so it's it allows me to really individualize who is a part of what meeting. So the name is, uh, this is a home visit. I'm looking for, this is the internal meeting ID that I'm going to reference back later. So I'm, I'm putting that in the description of the meeting because that's kind of weird. Google can only search. Uh, they have very limited search for looking for an event. So this is the way I, I found to work around that. So in this case, this is actually the client's address. It's showing my office, but this would pull the client's address. There's no conferencing or virtual meeting set up. So I'm saying the start time is the date that would come through. The end time is this formatted date, which is step five. Uh, you can choose frequency, which is not really applicable to this. 
uh, color, not really interested. So the attendees, the first attendee is, is our project consultant. So that's Dan. And the second attendee would be the client. And that, so those emails will populate. Our emails are pretty simple. It's the first name and the last name. If you had a more uh, intricate email naming convention, you probably would need to set up a table and then look at, and then reference that, do some kind of lookup to pull that. And going down here, we do not use reminders at all. And then obviously you want to set to busy that way it gets, it gets, uh, you know, blocked on the calendar and I'm saying, yes, guests can modify. So what I'll do here is I've got the calendar pulled up so you can see there's really nothing on it. And in job trade, I'm going to say, let's set the first appointment. So let's just say on uh, Saturday at um, 9 a.m. So we'll set that and we'll go back to the calendar. Just wait for a few seconds and it will populate. I would pause it, but I just want to show you how long it takes, which is not long. So there it is. So it's popped up. There's the title. There's the address. Here are the two attendees. And this is where that meeting ID is. And I'll show you this next step, why that is important. So on the next zap, what I'm going to say is if it needs to be rescheduled, which you know can be very likely. So this path, what it's looking for is if there's data in the next and previous, so the next, if there, if, let me start with the previous, if there's pre, previous data exists and next data exists. So if I'm saying in this case, there's previous data here. And if I go to change this data, it will pull those. So this is an and situation as well. All these are set up as ands. So this really helps you filter down to, to stop the action from happening. So once again, want to be 90 minutes. And the find calendar function. So this is where the meeting ID comes into play. So I'm referencing back to my job trade custom field to pull that meeting ID. And no other data is changing. So I can do that. It'll find it. And when I go to update, I only need to add the updates to the calendar. So this is important too. So you just look for the event. When you go to actually put this event here, you'll want to, uh, it might default to this where it's just like the event. And I'm not exactly sure if that would only ever look for that one. But what you need to do is go to the find event and go down to select the ID. That's going to make it dynamic to where it will uh, pull the correct meeting. So once you have that, you can tell the new start time and the new end time. So let me go back into here and let's say uh, they need to move it to the 12th, but instead they need to do it at 3 p.m. So we'll click save. Let's go back to the calendar. So right now it's on the 10th. Wait a few seconds here and it'll pop over to the 13th or the 12th, sorry. So it shows up over there now. So the third step of the zap is to delete. So in the case where the client no longer wants to meet for some reason or you know whatever the reason is, it's not a good fit, maybe it, either way. So same function, you want to find the calendar, right? So put that meeting ID in, go down to delete. So this event uh, action is delete. And in the action, it's pretty simple. We're just saying, here's the meeting ID. Uh, yes, please notify them. So now when I go back to here and the way I have this set up, I kind of jump past that path. So the way I have this set up is I'm saying, once again, an and, so if the next is does not exist or is blank essentially, and the previous did exist. So there was something and then now there's not anything. And so I'm gonna show you here if I go to this and delete this and save it. So I've got nothing there and I go back to my calendar and it's on the 12th and it's just gonna disappear. All right, so it poof gone. So that's the overall structure. And once again, you could probably maybe use this in conjunction with Calendly or you know, in in place of that, we just made a decision where we just don't have enough functionality to really need that. You know, I think the the powerful part of job trade is really integrating these other softwares and using these apps to create like really custom functionality. And also for our sales team, it's very simple for them just just to go into the uh, job trade record and just type in 
add the date, time, done. So it's very simple for them. They don't have to think about adding the email or what's the address, you know, what are the meeting details? It's just already done for them. So hopefully this helps someone or inspires uh, another kind of that. See ya.